Hey guys, Backyard Scientist here. Today we're doing two of my most requested videos at the same time. Today it's the ultimate battle of hot versus cold. Get ready for molten aluminum versus dry ice and liquid nitrogen. Let's get started. So the first thing I needed to do was to buy some dry ice, and believe it or not, I can actually buy dry ice at my local grocery store. It only costs $1.50 per pound. I put the dry ice behind some cinder blocks to protect myself, just in case there's any splatter. Alright, I was just about to start up the forge, and when I opened this up, guess what I found hiding inside? A little baby lizard. This guy is so lucky, he would have been a shish kebab if I fired this up. Now we gotta get him out of here, that's the tricky part. I was sent this FLIR 1 thermal camera a long time ago, but my iPhone broke, so I never got to use it, sorry. Um, this is a real thermal camera, so we'll be able to see anything cool or hot that happens that we can't see with our naked eye. Is it on it? Yep. Is it falling on it? Yeah. It's like right off. Really? Weird. <laughs> This is pretty interesting. The aluminum just slid right off of the dry ice. It's because a layer of carbon dioxide was produced under the hot aluminum. I thought something more would have happened. I'm gonna try something else, but let's look at the results first in the meantime. I'll look at the bubble. Oh, okay. Oh, oh. my finger! <laughs> oh, look at that. It's like, uh, ow! Yeah, I deserve that. Ha! <laughs> That's funny. Look at the stuff it left behind. Nice little indent. That one's frozen solid, like ice cubes. Is it? Yeah, touch it. Yep, it's ice cold. Careful. Ah, it's so cold it hurts. <laughs> yeah. It's like frozen. <laughs> I tried to make an indent into the block of dry ice by heating it with a blowtorch, but I guess it didn't make a deep enough indent and the aluminum just slid right out again. I'm making a bigger indent using the heavy ingot of tin I used in my steak video. When the ingot of tin started to cool down, something interesting happened. It started making a really cool chiming noise, and I think it's caused by the contractions of tin's internal crystal structure. So that was just an interesting thing to happen. Maybe somebody else has a better explanation. So now that there's a deeper hole, I tried to do this again. Yeah, there was definitely a more vigorous reaction. The aluminum started uh, bouncing out of there and dancing all around. It's pretty cool. I like this shot. It looks like a, a lake of molten lava, but it's molten metal instead. We dropped the molten aluminum onto the dry ice, and that was pretty cool, but what happens if we put dry ice into the molten aluminum? So what I'm going to do is fill this cup with chunks of dry ice and then fill that with molten aluminum. So when I pour this string, the chunks of dry ice will just fall right there into the molten aluminum and then we'll see what happens there. That's still good. All still right. Still molten. <laughs> yes. Three, two, one. Oh my god, look. What? It's bubbling. It made like a bunch of bubbles. It's just a bubble. Oh, it's still molten underneath. It is. <sighs> How many moles? That's aluminum stew right there. Well, that was a fun experiment. Now you guys know what happens when you pour molten aluminum onto dry ice. Now let's find out what happens when you pour molten aluminum into liquid nitrogen. Molten aluminum has a temperature of about 1,200 degrees Fahrenheit, and liquid nitrogen is negative 320 degrees Fahrenheit. That is a very big temperature difference. The molten aluminum falls through the liquid nitrogen like it's not even there, but there is such a big temperature difference that there's a lot of rapid boiling of the liquid nitrogen. Nothing explosive, but it is pretty noticeable. The batteries in the FLIR infrared camera ran out, so I didn't get to capture that in infrared. And my camera only captures two seconds of slow motion, so I didn't get to see the glass breaking either. But it did happen really fast.
This is the end result of pouring liquid nitrogen into those square flower pots like that. Now it's time to move on. What happens when we pour liquid nitrogen into molten aluminum? I used the remote pouring device to stay far away just in case something happened like a molten aluminum explosion, but nothing like that happened because I think the liquid nitrogen is just so less dense than the aluminum, it didn't even get a chance to go below the surface. It never even came into direct contact with the aluminum because of the massive amounts of nitrogen gas produced. Well guys, hope you like this video. See you next time.